And we're back now with Senator Richard Shelby, the top Republican on the Banking Committee. He joins us from Montgomery, Alabama, with us from Portland, Maine this morning, Congressman Barney Frank of Massachusetts, chairman, of course, of the House Financial Services Committee. Gentlemen, thank you both. I want to start uh, with what uh, Robert Gibbs just said about this executive compensation limit uh, that suddenly showed up in the uh, stimulus package that the Congress passed. This was clearly more than the administration had wanted. Senator Shelby, uh, what, what do you make of what Robert Gibbs just said? Well, it seemed to me that he was waffling a little bit. I believe, Bob, in ordinary times where the government money is not involved, that we should not limit, or the government should not be involved in limiting executive pay in any way. That's a private matter. But where our taxpayers' money is going to these banks, that we, and a lot of them have misspent this money, as we've known, and we've seen and no accounting for the rest. We should put a limit on where, what these people make, where they're begging for our money. We should protect the taxpayers here. And I believe this provision in the stimulus bill is going in the right direction as far as protecting the taxpayers. So even though you voted against this bill, you are, it sound like you're very much for this provision. I, I am, I think that we need that. Uh, I'm uh, totally against private uh, companies, uh, uh, us being involved in private companies where their money is involved, but where the taxpayers' money is involved, we better make sure that money is spent wisely and it hadn't been under TARP 1. Chairman Frank, what's your response to this? I agree uh, with half of what Senator Shelby said. Yes, this is important. It's in the bill. And let me be very clear, uh, Mr. Gibbs may uh, not like it, but it's going to be enforced. The administration I believe understands, I've certainly done everything I could to get them to understand it, that if they want any capacity going forward to have any more resources available to deal with the banking situation, they've got to undo the legitimate anger that existed in the public the way TARP-1 was done. That means in part doing something about foreclosures, which I'm glad to say they're going to be doing very soon. It means that they've got to make sure that some of this money that we give, a lot of it, is relent. But they also have to be tough on compensation. So this is not an option. This is not, frankly, the Bush administration where they're going to issue a signing statement and refuse to uh, enforce it. They will enforce it. And I'm glad. But I differ with Senator Shelby in, in one sense. He said, well, only when they are getting the government money. I think we need to try to prevent the situations where people come to us. The problem with incentive, uh, with, with compensation, particularly in the financial situation, is that it has perverse incentives. Uh, you know, this problem didn't start in September. We began to provide some money in September, but I would have liked, uh, beginning in 2006 is when I first started pushing for this say on pay to let the shareholders deal with it. And here's the problem. The way the compensation is structured for a lot of these companies, if they take a gamble and it pays off, the top people get a lot of money. But if they take a gamble and it backfires, they don't lose any money. It's heads they win, tails they break even. That's a perverse incentive. And so when we deal with trying to put rules in place, which we greatly need, to reduce risk taking that puts government money at risk. You know, many of these are insured by the federal deposit insurance operation. Then we have got to make it illegal for them to have these one way streets, which I think add to the incentive to take unnecessary risk. All right. Uh, let me, uh, speaking of details, let me talk to you a little bit, both of you, about the uh, presentation that Treasury Secretary Geithner made last week. There was every expectation that he was going to outline some specific plans on uh, rescuing the banks. Uh, and uh, he didn't. Uh, he, he outlined some sort of some broad concepts, uh, I must say, uh, that it was universally panned uh, in the stock market went uh, way down after he announced this. What happened, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, with the Geithner plan? Uh, is it urgent that uh, Wall Street get some details on this pretty quickly? Or, or why do you think uh, this took the turn it did last week? Well, one, I don't think one-day uh, trends in the stock market or one-day directions. Uh, uh, the stock market over time is a very rational predictor and allocator of assets uh, uh, and resources. But on any one day, I think it's uh, not, not wise to read too much into it. Um, I think Tim Geithner is doing a wonderful job um, moving forward. Uh, maybe they should have told people, don't be expecting too much of this. And again, there were two things he didn't give details on. One was how they're going to deal with the, with the bank bad assets. Another was foreclosures. Now, I understand this next coming week, he's going to deal with one of those, which is a, and, and it's going to be a great distinction between the Bush administration. You know, one of the reasons we have this anger about TARP-1 was it was seen as helping banks with very few restrictions, 
although some of us tried to get the Secretary of the Treasury to enforce them, uh, and didn't do anything for the average citizen. Uh, you're going to see a very important, very helpful foreclosure reduction plan rolled out. Shortly thereafter, you'll get the details. Now, people may, or, or the specifics on, on, on where we are with the banks. So having waited uh, a week on foreclosure and maybe 10 days on, uh, on the bank assets, I, I don't think does any damage. All right, let's get Senator Shelby's reaction here. Uh, bu uh, Bob, I believe that Senator Geithner, I mean Secretary Geithner, got off to a bad start last week. He was unprepared as far as details were concerned after a lot of fanfare. Uh, he wasted about four hours of the Senate's time that I was there. Uh, we didn't learn a lot of things. He was uh, nervous about the whole plan. I asked him, was the plan, it seemed to me, in, in, as far as it being uh, a concept, maybe a son of Paulson. I hope it's not. If it is, this plan's going to be another big mistake uh, following the Paulson 1 TARP plan. Well, let me Can I just uh, say ask, one thing, Bob? Uh, yeah. One thing, I, I, I understand some of what Richard said, but being accused of wasting the Senate's time is like being accused of making it too cold, cold in Alaska. <laughs> All right. Let me just well, ask you uh, uh, one. Let me let me just get on to one thing that uh, Mr. Geithner did talk about, and he talked about putting the big banks to a stress test. In other words, to get into the books to determine if they are strong enough to survive. I guess he means with the bailout funds. Uh, but what if they don't meet the stress test? What do you take that to mean, Senator Shelby? I, I think I took it to mean that they're going to close them. There are a lot of banks are like the walking dead. Uh, a lot of them need to be closed now. I think we would save a lot of money. Nobody wants to close some of the big banks. They say they're too big to fail. Dr. Volker testified before the Senate committee. He said some of those banks are too big to exist. And I think he's right. We're spending billions, 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 maybe trillions. I don't know what to answer to, but if a bank is insolvent, we should not keep it open. It costs more in the long run. Should we allow these banks to fail, uh, Chairman uh, Frank? Oh, of course, and we have allowed some to fail. Indy Mac failed, and, and, and uh, Sheila Bear, the excellent uh, chair of the FDIC, who was a Bush appointee carried over by, uh, by this administration, is doing a good job with it. Wachovia went out of business, and it was taken over by Wells Fargo. In fact, we have a pretty good system in place for bank failures. One of the things we're going to have to do going forward, Bob, and uh, Chairman Bernanke has said this, uh, Mr. Volcker a lot, and Hank Paulson had said it, we don't have a comparable system for helping a large non-bank financial institutions go out of business. That's why both Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers were so troubling, because we don't have a regular procedure. So yes, uh, we, we, have, we know how to help banks go out of business without any damage, and let's be very clear, people should understand if they have insured deposits, they are protected. Let's not have any citizen who's got an insured deposit insured by the federal government think for a second that even a nickel is at risk. All right, let me ask you quickly because you mentioned the $50 billion that Mr. Geithner is talking about to, for foreclosure relief. Is, and we have about a minute left here, Mr. Chairman. Is that going to be enough or will more money be needed to stall? I don't think it will be enough, but in fairness to Mr. Geithner, we won't know that for a while. I, I believe that he will be, he's got a good set of plans coming forward to begin to reduce foreclosures. And by the way, we reduce foreclosures not just to be charitable to individuals, but because the massive number of foreclosures is a major macroeconomic problem. It hurts the whole economy. And so uh, what I hope is this. We will begin. If, in fact, by the time we've used $50 billion, it turns out we can use more, then I believe the Congress would be responsive. But first, they're going to have to demonstrate right. the will, which they have demonstrated, and the capacity to use it effectively. Let me give Senator Shelby the last 30 seconds. We've got, we've got an awesome task on our hand. But uh, what troubles me about all of it is the role of the Fed. I think the Fed's in uncharted waters. Uh, I'm not sure that we have a lot of confidence in them right now. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for a very informative discussion.